Good morning, everybody. I'm delighted to welcome all of you here in the room and joining us online to the second of our plenary lectures at ECR 2023. This lecture is called From the Dark Room to the Dark Side, Thoughts from a Radiologist Leading a National Cancer Control Programme, and it will be delivered by Professor Richard Olida. Richard and I have been colleagues and friends since the day we both started training in radiology 35 years ago. Our careers have followed parallel paths with slight divergences, doing slightly different things, but we've both had the privilege of doing interesting things in our lives, and it's been a great pleasure to work with Richard in many uh, ventures over the last 35 years. The reason he's here today is that in 2019, he took, or 2020, he became the leader of the Irish National Cancer Control Programme. This programme began in 2007 as an effort to combine all cancer care in the country of Ireland under one roof with one set of management uh, uh, for the entire programme and one set of goals for every centre delivering cancer care. The first three leaders of that programme were all radiation oncologists. But a couple of years ago, Richard became the first diagnostic radiology to lead this programme. And he's been doing so very successfully for the last few years. I thought it might be of interest to our members to hear what it's like for a diagnostic radiologist to have control of an entire country's cancer programme. And it's with that in mind that I invited Richard to give us his plenary lecture. So, Without further ado, could I ask Richard to join me on the stage and um, we'll hear what he has to tell us. Thank you, Adrian. Many thanks, Adrian, for that very kind introduction and for your personal and professional support over the last 35 years. It is much appreciated. I would also like to thank Adrian and the Programme Committee for inviting me here today. Perhaps an explanation of the title of my lecture is in order. When I began my radiology career with Adrian, approximately 35 years ago, the dark room was still in existence. And it looked a little different to the one on the slide here, but things have advanced a lot since then throughout my radiology career. And it, the dark room has obviously been superseded and made redundant by digital imaging. I have now moved to management, and when clinicians in Ireland take on an administrative or, or management role, they are frequently said to have moved to the dark side. Hence the title of my lecture, From the Dark Room to the Dark Side, and here are some thoughts from leading the National Cancer Control Programme over the last couple of years. So this is a bone scan image from the well-known requisite series. It has the appearance like Janus, the Roman god of uh, doorways, and the appearance is due to movement artifact. And many clinicians wonder whether one has to adopt a Janus-like dual personality when one takes up a leadership role or a management role. And that's perhaps so. However, while there are fundamental differences in the nature of clinical and leadership roles, the evolution of modern healthcare, including teamwork and integrated care, are reducing the differences between them. This is an outline of my lecture. I will just briefly discuss uh, some elements of leadership roles. I will describe some elements of the National Cancer Control Programme and my role as National Director. I will speak a little about the contribution of radiology to the broader National Cancer Control Programme mission with some recent examples. I will discuss radiology within the wider healthcare system and also the importance of learning from others. This is a table which outlines the differences between the traditional nature of clinical medicine compared to the nature of leadership, published by the Centre for Healthcare Governance of the American Health Association, or Hospital Association, in 2012. As I said, with the evolution of modern healthcare, the dif these differences are reducing. However, the table does encapsulate some fundamental differences. Since I have taken up my role, I am particularly struck by the ill-defined, messy problems, the resolution and uh, diagnosis of which often requires complex processes over time. And this compares to relatively well-defined problems and procedures and episodes in, in, in clinical medicine. 
While I have encountered resistance in my role, as opposed to thanks, I have also had enormous support from many stakeholders. But I suspect some of my uh, colleagues are still suspicious of me being a suit. What of radiologists in a leadership role? I believe that radiology training and practice as a, uh, equips radiologists as opposed to other clinicians with some well-defined qualities suitable for a leadership role. These include attention to detail, synthesizing complex, the ability to synthesize complex information, being comfortable with uncertainty while still drawing firm conclusions, communicating these conclusions clearly and with confidence, without arrogance, hopefully. And team working has always been part of radiology practice and is increasing with multidisciplinary and integrated care. Adaptability. We work in one of the most rapidly evolving clinical specialties, which engenders significant adaptive skills in radiologists. And finally, humility. Our own personal store of discrepancies and errors ensures, in most cases, a suitable degree of humility. Radiologists, I believe, can therefore bring these same key qualities to master the practice of leadership. The National Cancer Strategies in Ireland. Before describing my role as National Director of the NCCP, perhaps I can give some context. Cancer policy in Ireland is driven by periodic national cancer strategies. These are developed with wide stakeholder engagement, including public and patient consultation. When the strategy is agreed, it is generally endorsed by our government, and the strategies cover a wide range of recommendations, including prevention and early detection, diagnostics, treatment, quality of life for patients, research, and governance. In theory, implementation funding follows. However, in practice, the funding of the strategies has been subject to the vagaries of the economic cycle over the last 20 years. These are usually 10-year strategies, and we've had three strategies since 1996. And the National Cancer Control Programme evolved from the report in 2006. And as Adrian said, it was established in 2007, and is part of the Health Service Executive, the National Health Service. We adopt a programmatic approach to the implementation of policy, and, with implement, and we implement across the whole patient pathway. Examples of issues addressed include the organization of current cancer services, the development of new services, and the development of national guidelines and protocols. The link between this model of cancer policy implementation and improved cancer survival has been validated in, by an international study published in Lancet Oncology in 2022. What of the role of the National Director? Well, the role has two components. One, is C, one has a CEO function in the organization and a clinical leadership role in cancer care nationally. It is a seconded appointment from a clinical post. The, to date, the incumbents, incumbents in this role have included two radiation oncologists and one medical oncologist prior to my taking up the role in 2020. The key stakeholders with whom I engage include other elements internally within the health service executive, such as the other clinical divisions, finance, HR, estates, and others. But however, more importantly is the engagement external to the health service. We meet with patients and advocacy groups. We liaise with government departments, the Department of Health, the Department of Further and Higher Education, Innovation, Research and Science. We engage with the universities, the postgraduate training bodies, and the international cancer agencies. To whom are we answerable? Well, ultimately, we're answerable to two broad groups, the patients for high-quality health care and the taxpayers for value-based health care. We have, sorry, we have many measures for high quality care, but a macroscopic measure is to compare our cancer mortality rate with other jurisdictions. You can see here, Ireland's cancer mortality in 2019 was higher than the EU average. 
However, the reduction in cancer mortality over the last decade was significantly more than the EU average, as can be seen by the numbers in this box. Answering to the patients and the taxpayers in a democracy also occurs in a less scientific but very public way when appearing before our Parliamentary Health Committee. These are two screenshots from a recent televised appearance in February this year when there was a particular focus on waiting lists for cancer treatment. These sessions can be quite challenging as the questioning is frequently robust and wide-ranging However, there is a chairman who is a parliamentarian and keep, who keeps everything in good order. This cannot be said of our media, however, where we are also answerable to the public. There is an intense interest in and coverage of healthcare affairs in the Irish media. However, the coverage is frequently negative, as I suspect is true in many countries. However, Ireland is a relatively small country, and this can, in a national role, this can sometimes feel like a fishbowl. The National Con Cancer Control Programme works across the whole pa patient pathway, from prevention through early detection, diagnosis, treatment and palliation. The quality of life of patients and survivors is an integral, integral component of all elements in the pathway. Radiology obviously plays a pivotal role in many elements of the cancer pathway, as you are all aware. I'm showing some examples here on the basis that a lecture to radiologists without images would be bordering on the scandalous. This is an 8 mm spiculated lesion in the left upper lobe, biopsy of which revealed an adenocarcinoma, which was staged using PET-CT as a T1A, N0, M0 lung adenocarcinoma. The role of radiology in treating cancer has progressed significantly over the last number of years. This avidly enhancing hepatoma was treated with percutaneous thermal ablation. The last example demonstrates one of the many roles of radiology in palliative care. Here a gastrostomy catheter is inserted using fluoroscopic guidance. A critical plank in the delivery of safe, high quality care is the tumour conference. The NCCP has issued a standard operating procedure guidance document for such meetings in Ireland. The central role played by radiologists in these critical conferences need not be stressed to this audience. Next, I will turn to the contribution of radiology to the broader National Cancer Control mission. Radiologists contribute enormously to the work of the NCCP outside of their direct role as clinicians and it's invariably in a voluntary capacity for which we are very grateful. I would like to give two recent examples of such contribution. The first demonstrates the impact, the important input from radiologists into the development of national cancer guidelines using our prostate cancer group as an example. The second demonstrates the important role of radiologists in the development of a new clinical service. In this case, the development of PRRT for neuroendocrine tumors. The development of national guidelines was one of the key recommendations of our most recent cancer strategy. The rationale for national gui guidelines were to avoid unwarranted variation in access, quality, cost and outcome, and to prevent overuse and underuse of healthcare resources, which is particularly relevant in radiology. The benefits of national guidelines uh, are that they are evidence-based using the latest research information, they have a multidisciplinary input, they incorporate patient values in the formulation of the recommendations, they are national in their remit, and they are endorsed by the, our Department of Health, which is useful in Ireland because of the difficult medical-legal climate in which we operate compared to other European dis dis jurisdictions. And the guidelines have key implementation and quality measures. These are some of the guidelines we have produced in the last few years, the latest of which is the national guideline on the diagnosis and staging of patients with prostate cancer. 
This guideline addressed a number of issues, in the, including the utility of MRI, PSMA, and prostate, guideline, or prostate biopsy in the patient pathway. This is our, the members of our prostate cancer guideline development group. And as you can see, radiology, there are a significant number of radiologists in the group, along with other clinical groups such as pathology, surgery, radiation, oncology, palliative care, and nursing. However, you can see there is also patient representation and a professor of medical ethics who guides the committee. This is an example of the recommendation template, and you can see that there is um, the, qu the quality of evidence, uh, the research evidence is assessed, and there is also a grade of recommendation, a strength uh, or a, an analysis of the grade of recommendation, which depends on the strength of the evidence, the benefits and harms ratio, the patient's values, and the required and available resources. In addition to good practice points, there are also practical considerations around patient care, which is a reflection of the input from our patients. These guidelines are readily assessed on our website and are available to all clinicians. The second example of a recent radiology input into our broader mission involved the repatriation of PRRT for neuroendocrine tumours. Irish patients have previously received this treatment in other European countries, which limited the range of patients suitable for treatment. So the NCCP designated a single national centre and set up a multidisciplinary group to, divide the, to drive this development. Obviously, radiologists were key members of this group. The group advised on the funding necessary to provide infrastructural and HR resources to develop the services, and they developed referral pathways to ensure equitable access for all patients in Ireland. They're also developing appropriate KPIs and quality measures. This is a gadolinium dotatate PET CT, uh, which uh, illustrates a neuroendocrine tumor at the tail of the pancreas with uh, hepatic metastases. Next, we come to radiology within the wider healthcare system. As radiologists, we are all aware that cancer care is just one element of the function of radiology in the wider healthcare system. It is a truly platform service for almost all hospital specialties and is essential to safe, efficient primary and community care. Its role in screening is obviously important for public health. Radiology is central to high quality integrated care and it adds value to the whole healthcare system. I speak to you as a radiologist, speaking predominantly to radiologists. However, the depth and breadth of radiology input may not be well appreciated by all in the healthcare system. It behoves us all, therefore, to play our part as advocates for radiology. My current role as National Director in the Cancer Control Programme includes input into national discussions on healthcare more broadly, other than cancer itself. This allows me to highlight the central importance of radiology in healthcare and to promote the development of a national diagnostic strategy for Ireland. Finally, learning from others, another perspective. This is a logo for the Irish language TV station in Ireland, TJ Cahar. The tagline is Suil Ella, and that means another view another perspective. And this is what the Irish Channel gives us compared to its English, English lang language counterparts in Ireland. And I am reminded of this because my current role, as I have said previously, involves engagement with a long list of stakeholders as illustrated here. They all have their own views and perspectives which are equally valid and held with integrity. I have learned much from listening to all of them, which helps me to work with them to progress and develop solutions to our healthcare needs. In addition to learning from the stakeholders, the role allows me to be aware of and contribute to the developing the wider vision for healthcare in Ireland. This includes subsidiarity, empowering high quality local care 
as close to the population as is safe. Centralization to ensure critical mass and expertise for complex procedures and rare conditions. Integration between all elements of the patient pathway to provide a seamless, smooth pathway for the patient's journey. Networking, not only in the sense of IT connectivity, but in the broader sense to include learning and sharing expertise. And finally, accreditation, ensuring quality whatever, wherever in the country a patient is being treated. So in summary, I would encourage radiologists to participate in leadership roles outside radiology. You have unique qualities to contribute. Such roles enable appropriate highlighting of the central role of radiology in the whole healthcare system. One learns from other stakeholders, getting another perspective, sui lele. And finally, it provides awareness of and a platform for participation in the wider vision. How do I approach a national leadership role where, to paraphrase William Butler Yeats, results and decisions come dropping slow? In the archaic language of its time, I find relevance in the words of Robert Louis Stevenson, as courage and intelligence are the two qualities best worth a good man's cultivation. So it is the first part of intelligence to recognize our precarious state in life, and the first part of courage to be not at all abashed before that fact a frank and somewhat headlong carriage, not looking too anxiously before, not dallying in maudlin regret over the past, stamps the man who is well armoured for this world. I would like to acknowledge my colleagues Kira Mellet and Evo O'Toole in the NCCP, and my radiology colleagues Gerard Healy, Nicola Hughes, David Murphy and Roland McDermott for helping with this talk. Mila Boykis, many thanks. Congratulations, Richard. Thank you very much for that. Uh, may I award you with the certificate from the European Society of Radiology in recognition of your plenary lectureship. And Thank you very much, Richard. There's a chap here who wants to take our picture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Richard. That's great. It's all right. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Th